When tornado outbreaks occur, they usually cover a large area, but on June 3, 1980, an outbreak took place that only impacted a single city, Grand Island, Nebraska. June 3, 1980 was a warm day in Grand Island, with temperatures in the 80s and the 90s and dew points in the 60s. Cape was well over 4,000, more than enough to produce multiple strong tornadoes. The first tornado of the outbreak touched down 11 miles northwest of Grand Island, Nebraska at 8.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. It traveled southeast and did something weird. It looped, but it didn't just loop once, it looped seven times. Luckily, the tornado traveled over mostly open fields, only causing F1 to F3 damage to a few farm buildings. It dissipated at 9.34 p.m. in the northwest part of Grand Island after traveling for 14.4 miles. The tornado caused one fatality and 25 injuries as well as two and a half million dollars in damage. The second tornado of the night touched down 15 minutes after the first tornado at 9 p.m. in the far northern parts of the city. This tornado was the first of three anticyclonic tornadoes during the outbreak. This made it unique since only about 1% of tornadoes are anticyclonic. It traveled northeast at F1 strength and making a sharp U-turn towards the end of its life, causing the path to resemble a question mark. Around this time, the first of only two photos of this outbreak would be taken. The picture was shot by Rob Gartner and shows the first F1 tornado, as well as the second F3 of the night. The tornado dissipated at 9.12 p.m. after being on the ground for 0.9 miles. It caused $25,000 in damage, five injuries, and no fatalities. The third tornado would touch down five minutes after the second at 9.05 p.m. Just like the second tornado, this tornado was also anticyclonic. It traveled north for about 0.2 miles before making a sudden U-turn. This caused the tornado to travel south, putting it on a direct collision course for Grand Island. When the tornado did hit the city, it made a sharp turn east, narrowly avoiding the Grand Island High School. After this, it traveled southeast for about 1.6 miles before dissipating at 9.30 p.m. north of downtown. It traveled for about 3.7 miles at F3 intensity and caused $2.5 million in damage as well as one fatality and 40 injuries. The fourth tornado of the night was also the third and final anticyclonic tornado. It touched down at 9.46 p.m. southwest of Grand Island. It traveled southwest at F1 strength, gradually turning in a more northern direction before dissipating at 9.50. The tornado luckily caused no fatalities or injuries over its 2.4 mile path. The fifth tornado of the outbreak was also the most violent. It touched down at 10.16 p.m. in a suburb east of Grand Island. The tornado immediately caused F2 damage to numerous homes in the suburb. It traveled west while increasing in size and intensity, reaching F4 strength as it entered Grand Island. Around this time, the tornado began traveling in a southwest direction. It then produced more F4 damage to a couple of houses on East Sunset and Clausen Avenue. After this, the tornado began traveling in a more southern direction along South Locust Street and caused F4 damage once again along West Stoley Park Road. The tornado began turning southeast while producing its last F4 damage on Brahma Street. It later dissipated at 10.28 p.m. after being on the ground for 5.3 miles. In total, the tornado caused three fatalities, 110 injuries, and over $200 million in damage. The second photo from this outbreak was of this tornado. However, the photographer and the time the picture were taken are unknown. The sixth tornado touched down at 10.25 p.m. southeast of Grand Island. It traveled southwest, impacting a small neighborhood as well as a few other structures at F2 strength. The tornado then began turning in a southeast direction as it crossed over the path of the second F1 from about a half an hour earlier. It then began to slowly turn northeast before dissipating at 10.35 p.m. The tornado caused 18 injuries and $2.5 million in damage over its 3.4 mile path. The seventh and final tornado of the night touched down at 11 p.m. about 5 miles southeast of Grand Island. It moved southeast before turning in a more eastern direction. After this, just like the first tornado of the outbreak, the tornado looped. It then looped three more times before dissipating at 11.30 p.m. southeast of Phillips. This tornado luckily traveled over mostly open fields, only causing F1 damage. It traveled 12.3 miles and caused two injuries and two and a half million dollars in damage. I hope you enjoyed this video and please consider subscribing so you can learn more about weather phenomena on my channel.